Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we come to you on a week to week basis as we're looking for what we call the thousand best practices, actually the solutions that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And we are estimated to have a planet of 9 billion people by 2050. And how are we going to take care of 2 billion new people when people are saying we're struggling with the 7 plus billion that we have right now? And I have someone sitting right beside me who's actually working on this issue, many issues actually. Her name is uh, Helen Fishahari, and she is the principal and CEO of what's called F3 Global. And I'm going to have you explain F3 in just a minute. Sure. But I think it's really exciting what you're doing as far as uh, working with the International you know, the Association of Women in Business. And the fact that you're just helping people all over the planet to move forward, particularly on the African continent, is exciting. Well, thank so you. So tell us a little bit about F3 Global. What F3 sure. stands for and what is the organization? Sure. Um, F3 Global stands for Focus Future Forward. And so our goal, we are actually a strategy consulting firm that focuses primarily on developing uh, human capacity on the continent as well as in the Middle East and in the Caribbean. Um, our sector specifically is health, agriculture, and entrepreneurship. And so, like you said, our goal is really how do we move people forward, how do we move businesses mm -hmm. forward, and how do we move infrastructure forward so that That's everyone okay. is uh, capable of having a healthy community and a healthy society overall. Yeah. Now, looking at that, why did you create F3? Because this is something that's your creation. And right. you're looking at the globe when you, because it's right in your name, but it's something right. that you really are doing. Many people will start locally and move out from there, right. but you really started internationally, and now you're moving back into the local community. So exactly. why the difference in the thrust and the energy that you actually are providing, not only here, but also overseas? Well, I mean, my family is kind of global. I have family all over the world, from the U.S. to the Middle East to Europe to Africa. I was born on the continent of Africa. And I've always had a very global mentality, um, and I really believe in the concept of community and society working together for the long-term sustainability of projects. I've also had an opportunity to work on various different projects, both locally and globally. And so this concept of community, but then also top leadership really working together is very important for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started it really about two and a half years ago, primarily out of the work that I was already engaged in. So I was working in South Africa, I was working all over the continent, but I was also working all over the US and in parts of Europe. And I just kept seeing the same commonalities. And so I was like, you know what, um, I think we can contribute something here. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. And looking at all this and talking about this commonality uh, and looking at this really being a global effort, and of course that's what, what you've actually been doing, but the, uh, the Association of Women in Business, this is mm -hmm. something that you've really been focused on. You've introduced us to a number of the leaders of that. Why are you working with that kind of association? Because you have your own organization, you're well connected across the African continent, back in the United States and even in Europe, but yet you're doing this spade work with a number of these associations, why? Well, that's a good question. I think part of it is partnership is really important for our F3 Global and myself. Um, and we try to identify organizations like AWeb that's doing really good paradigm shifting work. And I think that's what really drew me to the organization is not just its own leadership, who are amazing women who are very empowered leaders themselves, but the work that they're doing, pushing women on all levels forward and all industries forward, I think is really important. Um, I think you can't, uh, it's very hard to find organizations like that who are sustainable, but mm -hmm. also who are, who are um, courageous enough to take that type of stand, especially in continents like Africa that have certain gender-specific challenges at times and in communities like Ethiopia. Um, and so they're doing the work. I think they are actually the only paradigm shifting organization on the ground, but also who are connected to the diaspora. And so for me, that's important that you have both components, which is the local component, but then mm -hmm. the connection and the bridge to the diaspora. So, which is why we love AWIB, actually. <laughs> well, we're talking about the diaspora. So mm -hmm. let's define our term. What is the diaspora? And why is that so critical as far as the development? Because Africa now has moved beyond one billion. I mean, right. it was only five years ago, it was a little over 800 million. Now it's 1.2 billion people on the continent. And uh, the economic growth there is some of the highest in the world, beyond most of the developed nations and even some of the countries move beyond China and India. 
So this is a huge move forward, and we have what's called Africa Fast Forward and Emerald mm -hmm. Planet, and I know you have a similar concept in what you're doing with uh, AWeb mm -hmm. and also with your own organization. Right. I mean, the way right now for Africa diaspora is um, defined, the African Union actually defines it as people or ancestry of African descent. Mm -hmm. So that could include Afro-Latinos, that can include African Americans here, that can include Africans who have left the continent but live abroad. Um, but it also includes any African descended people who have an interest in moving the continent forward as well as the African Union. Now, the way I see the diaspora though is a little bit like that, that's the type of people mm -hmm. that are considered diasporans, but it's also about really moving the continent forward. Mm -hmm. And so, as diasporans, we don't have the same story, right? You have people like Nahu, who grew up there, came here, went back, and they're returnees, right? And so they're still members of the greater diaspora, but then they're also people who've made the decision to live on the continent and move the continent forward. Then you have those who are like myself, who were there briefly as a child, and were born as a child, but then came back, but then were raised in the US but then we have a strong interest to connect and tie to the continent. And then you have other people within that various spectrum. So I think at the end of it, a diaspora member is someone who has a heart for the continent and a heart for moving the continent forward. And diaspora is really important, I think, today, primarily because we do have the cap capacity. We have the knowledge, we have the skills, we have the education. And so we also have a desire nowadays to actually go back. We are at a point on the entire continent where you know, we've, we've moved past the wars, and I mean, we still have conflicts on the sure. ground, but the greater continent itself is in a lot more stabilized position to grow and develop, and I think the diaspora now has the heart to actually go back and to invest in one way or another. So and, and it has a very young population, exactly. over half the population is exactly. 25 or less. But it really sounds like as far as the diaspora, the definition is it's not only just the origins, right. but the willingness to give, the willingness to do, the willingness to be involved. Right. And let's introduce uh, Nahu again as Nahu Garma. She is the founder and director of the Association of Women exactly. uh, in Business. So we can clear that up. But looking at uh, what you're doing, you were in uh, Ethiopia mm -hmm. and uh, were giving a series of seminars, lectures, demonstrations over there. Mm -hmm. So what were your feelings while you were there as you're meeting people and uh, not only through the formal lectures and the formal sessions, but also just being out in the community, going to people's homes. What was your feeling about where they want to be in the future and how your work and also AWeb, mm -hmm. how that work is really going to help Ethiopia, but also many other countries. Right. You know, my experience at the May Forum, which is AWeb's annual uh, conference that they host uh, at the UN, was really exciting. For one, I was excited by the type of women that I met, you know, the single stay-at-home mothers, the mothers uh, that have various children but husbands at work. You also met the CEOs of Ethiopia. Um, both men and women. And it was exciting to see all these people excited, actually, about their own development, personally, professionally, and even the country's development. You saw a lot of infrastructure changing mm -hmm. rapidly. So for me, what that signaled is that we're at a really prime point where countries like Ethiopia can literally become models of development. Now, granted, there's still a lot of work to do on the ground. There's still a lot of problems, but then there's also new solutions. I think that's where we fit in, the problems that do exist around infrastructure, mm -hmm. development. Um, these are things that I think my, our company, as well as diaspora companies, can do. But then you have to have solid partnerships like AWeb to actually do the work. I don't see F3 Global really doing the work by ourselves. In Ethiopia, I see us as part of a larger consortium of companies and organizations like AWeb and you know, uh, Ethio Jobs and all these other great companies we met on the ground. In partnership, I think we can move continentally, the entire continent forward, locally, different countries forward. Yeah, we're working with three, uh, 13 different countries on the continent of 54. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about that, there's a great sense of community, there's a great sense of family, and that's mm -hmm. something they really build on. Mm -hmm. So looking at uh, when you were giving the seminars and all that, mm -hmm. how did this family connection, how was this networking aspect? I don't mean just, you know, you right. show up at a, an event and, you know, you have the, uh, you know, glass mm -hmm. of wine or a cup right. of tea and something to eat. and exchange business cards, they do things very differently right. as far as networking. Right. So how did you see that playing out while you were there? You know, it was a blessing actually, because in the U.S. they'd say, hi, how are you, what's your name, where do you work? 
and how can we help each other, right? But over there, it's really familial. It's very, you know, someone, you meet someone, they like you, they introduce you to their friends, and any needs that you have that you express or don't even express, they, they work towards helping you fulfill that. Mm -hmm. I was very blessed to come in through AWeb and come to their event. And in doing so, in that week that I was there, I literally met everybody because of AWeb. Mm -hmm. They introduced me to presidents of various organizations. They made sure my stay was completely comfortable. I felt like I had sisters there, to be honest. And so it really felt like I was actually working, but I was there to visit family. That's yeah. exactly how it felt. Yeah, so and when great. I've gone to places, you know, like uh, the Congo and Kenya and places like mm -hmm. it, it's the very same thing. They meet mm -hmm. you at the airport, actually right. will come in the plane in the if the they can, exactly. and uh, they stay, and then they deliver you back to the plane. Exactly. And they don't leave you the whole time that you're no, there. They don't. And they make sure you know everybody you're supposed to know while you're there and all the ones mm -hmm. that they know. That's uh, very important. Uh, one of the lessons, of course, is, you know, it's about family. What are <coughs> several, say, two or three other lessons lessons that you learned from your experience in Ethiopia and also ha hosting them here in the United States. Right. I think one of the number one most critical lessons I think to understand just even working in Africa but specifically in Ethiopia is that the the private sector is just slowly developing, mm -hmm. right? So the idea that private sector moves as fast as it does here it's very incorrect. And so while I was there, I had a chance to meet probably some of the top private sector leaders and just have conversations, coffee, dinners, everything with them to understand where the private sector is and where it's going. So I think one of the biggest lessons for me was that the private sector is slowly developing and that government still has control. And so learning to work within the government to make sure that we can work within private sector as far as hosting them here, it's been a really great time hosting uh, AWIP here because we had a diaspora women's panel that my company puts on and so they uh, partnered with us to move towards that and it was really great because it allowed us to share their experiences here and then we also hosted a happy hour so they've been great. One last question, what do you see uh, F3 Global going over the next 5, 10 to 15 years? And you've um, got to be quick. Sure. Next 5, 10 years, we're really focused on doing more projects on the continent and partnerships with organizations like AWeb and just promoting more self-sustainability from a local and a business perspective. And uh, this is Helen Vishahari and she's for principal and CEO of F3 Global. Thank you as we create the Emerald Planet.